Hello, I'm Christian Dimukadji. Welcome to my class. Today I would like to discuss about gradient boosting method. And uh, I would like to say prior to this method, it is always advisable to you to study linear regression, decision tree, random forest, and gradient decision method. However, in this lecture, I would like to explain uh, the gradient boosting method from scratch. I will use simple uh, pen and pencil and calculator to explain uh, the method. And at the same time, I will show you how to implement it using Python. Now, gradient boosting method, the first term gradient, you know, it comes from the gradient descent method. And boosting is basically is an ensemble. So that's why I said uh, to study random forest because random forest is also an, uh, is an example of ensemble. It is basically a bagging. In the bagging, what we are doing from each decision tree, we are getting this output and then we are taking the average. In boosting, what we are doing, in the boosting, we are following a sequential action. So in this gradient boosting method, what we will learn a sequential. So let us take this data. Uh, I have taken a very simplified data. So age in years, height in inch, and corresponding weight in kg is given. So age and height is basically independent variable. And weight is a dependent variable, often it is called the target column. Now, if you take this weight column, you will find the you know variables are basically 75, 65, 60, or 70, 65, 60. So it's lower limit is 60, and upper limit is 75. So the range is like this. So it is a continuous scale, it is not a discrete scale. So definitely. This data is for the regression. Now, in the students' class, I'm mainly discussing about how to use gradient boosting method for regression. You can use it for the classification. In the part two, I will discuss about the classification. And at the same time, I will discuss about the mathematics behind the gradient uh, boosting method. So Independent variable, you know, that is in uh, supervised machine learning. The data set in the data set, you will get the independent variable and the dependent variable. So, and our task is to find out the relationship or a mathematical function to relate the dependent variable with the independent variable. So, let us see how to do it. So first of all, what I am doing, I don't know decision tree, and I told you that is I need to start it from the scratch so that uh, you, maybe you have started decision tree, but you are not in position to you know uh, correlate with uh, the present class, so you can refer this and you can recall it. Decision tree, this decision tree I click here with the given set of data. Just now I showed in the previous slide. So what I'm doing in this decision tree, always keep in mind, it is a non-parametric method. It is a non-parametric method. It is an inverted tree. So on the top you will get, this is a root node. Root node, what I'm doing, the weight is the output column, height is the independent variable. And what I'm doing, I'm getting a feature space. And after that, I'm drawing the horizontal line, vertical line, etc. So this horizontal line and vertical line I'm drawing to split the feature space. So I will get the local region, you know, this local region I will get. So once I get this local region, it will be easier for me to monitor. So in the, when we are creating the decision tree, what is our purpose? We need to ask questions. So the first question is, if the height is less than 60.5, then I will keep data to the left hand side. If the height 
greater than or equal to 60.5 i will keep the data in right hand side now after that in the left hand side what i am doing i am just you know taking another independent variable age if the age less than 31 then i will keep the data to the left side if it is greater than or equal to 31 i will keep it here you know to the right hand side and this way i have prepared two data means the decision tree so the first one you are getting the root node and you are getting the leaf node in the leaf node what you are getting you are getting the value say weight equal to 65.0 weight equal to 60.0 weight equal to 70.0 weight equal to 68.00 weight equal to 75.0 and when you are preparing the decision tree from the given data set, so it is clear that is, yes, it is true, it is a non parametric method. And in every case, we are asking the question at each node, we are asking the question, and as per the answer, we are splitting the data. And what we are doing, we are doing, you know, we are drawing the horizontal line and the vertical line. These lines are nothing but the decision boundary. So with the decision boundary, we are splitting these pieces here. For what reason I'm discussing about the decision? Now, gradient boosted method, I should say, is a modified, we can consider this way, it is nothing but a modified decision tree approach. Because in the random forest, you know, we are generating trees because we can create, we can build a forest with trees. So with this concept, it's called the random forest. We are generating trees and creating a forest. And in case of, you know, uh, gradient boosting method, we are also using decision tree. So that's why I discussed in brief about the decision tree. So this is our data. So let us start the gradient boosting method with pen and pencil. It's pure hand calculation. So I have the age and height is the independent variable. Weight is the dependent variable of the target column. And the first prediction, that's why I said step one. So that's why I'm saying the first prediction is nothing but the average of all the values in target column. That means if you add 75, then uh, 75 plus 65 plus 68 plus 70 plus 65 plus 60. So you will get the sum of all the data points. How many data points are here? One, two, three, four, five, six. So divided by six. So you will get this average is equal to 67.1667. So if you round it, you will get 67.16. So this is our first prediction for all, you know, the rows. Means whether you are having the age 35, height 68, the prediction is 67. Okay, so the next column is first pseudo residual. What is pseudo residual? Now, residual is nothing but error. In linear regression, you will get this term residual. So, what is this residual? It is the difference between the actual value and the predicate. Now, in gradient boosted method, you will get the error, the same thing, the difference between the actual value and predicate value. But what we need to do, we need to, you know, give a separate name to this error, and we should separate it from the error that we are getting from this linear regression. So that's why I have given this name has been given pseudo residual. And in the first iteration or in first step, you are getting this data. So that's why I have mentioned this first pseudo residual. So what is this? A first value to first value is 7.83. And how you are getting the weight, the first value in the weight column is 75. Corresponding prediction value is 67.17. This is nothing but this average value. So 75 minus 67.17. Or the difference between 75 and 67.17 is equal to 7.8. So you can calculate all these values. You can use simple Excel sheet and you can calculate. I 
I hope the concept of residual and the pseudo residual is clear to you. So next is what I need to do. I need to create a decision tree. At this time, what I will do, I will remove the output column. And instead of the output column or the target column, I will use the value that you are getting from the first pseudo residual column. And with this, you need to build a decision tree. So here the output column is nothing but the first residual. And the independent variables are the height and age. So you will get, you know, decision tree just like this. So if the uh, data point, in the data point, you will find the height is less than 60.5. So this is the left child. If the, in the data point, you will find the height is greater than or equal to 60.5, you will get the right child. And this way you will split the data one after another, one after another. And finally, you will get, you know, at the leaf node, you will get the residual value. Residual value is equal to minus 2.17. Minus 7.17, 3.83, So this way you will build the decision. Now, the, with the residual values, the first seed the residual values, you created the decision. Now, how to predict? So what I will do, I will prepare a table. In the table, the first three columns, you will get age, height, and weight. And that you are getting from the data set. And the first prediction is nothing but this average value. And next value, you are getting the first pseudo residual. Okay. This first pseudo residual is nothing but the difference between the weight column and the first prediction, the corresponding value you will get. And the second DT value, second DT value means you have created a decision tree. And value you are getting from the leaf node, that is the residual value, just now I mentioned, or you can check it here. So these residual values, two, minus 2.17, minus 7.17, 2.83, 0 0.83, 7.83. Okay. So you get all these values for the second GT decision tree value here. Now, what is the second prediction? So for the second prediction, we will use and you know what I should say, a simple linear expression. The second prediction is equal to first prediction plus learning rate multiplied by the value that you are getting from second decision tree. Okay, so let's see. So second prediction is equal to first prediction plus learning rate multiplied by second DT value. DT means the decision tree. But what will be the value of the learning rate? It could be, you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.05, or 0 0.01, or any value you can take as well. Now, HQLearn in Python, it is you know just after completion of this calculation study, so you have to implement this code. When this Python, you will see this SQLearn using a default value, and default value is equal to 0 0.0. So that's why I'm considering the learning rate value is equal to 0 0.0. Now, first prediction is the average value 67.17. The learning rate value is 0 0.01. Multiplied by the second decision tree value is equal to 7.83. So if you add up, you will get 67.23. That is the second prediction. And once you get once you get the second prediction value, immediately you can calculate the second pseudo residual. What is the second pseudo residual? It is the difference between the actual value or the given value in the weight column, that is a 75 minus your predicate value in the second prediction, that is 67.2482. So the value you will get 7.751. Now, one observation. In first 
pseudo residual value is 7.82 and in the second pseudo residual value is 7.751 so in gradient boosting method the value of the pseudo residual will reduce one of them so what we are doing in the gradient boosting method first we are calculating this average this average is nothing but the average of the output column and this average is nothing but the first prediction and it is equal for the all rows next we are considering the learning rate learning rate is equal to 0.01 as per the sqlearn documentation and next what i am considering i am creating or i am building a decision tree in the decision tree i am using the independent variable that is the age and height and the dependent variable is weight instead of this weight i am using the first pseudo residual column value instead of weight column i am using first pseudo residual column and i am building a tree and from this tree i am getting this value of the residuals and this i am putting this value in the tabular format then i am going for the second prediction then i am going for the second pseudo residual value. okay now in the gradient boosting method you are calculating this average which is the first prediction then you are building a tree and this time what you are doing you are replacing the original output column with the first pseudo residual column and you are building the tree once you are building the tree you will find that is the same thing you are doing if height is less than 60.5 then left hand child the left hand child again you are setting age is less than 31 so you will get these two residual values minus 2.17 and minus 2.17 and the third residual uh, value if the age is greater than 31 height is less than 60.5 but age is greater than 31 so you will get this right hand child this right hand child value is minus 7.717 7, .717, 7 uh, minus 7.17 similarly you are getting e t height greater than equal to 60.5 then you are coming to the next node if the height is less than 68 then you are coming to this next node that is if age is less than 32.5 then you are splitting it residual number three is 2.83 and residual uh, number five 0 0.83 and if height is greater than equal to 68 you are getting residual number six corresponding value 7.8 okay so when you are getting these two values in a particular leaf node what you need to do you take the average of so minus 2.17 and minus 2.17 if you take this average so you will get this root node value is minus 2.17 okay now after that what you are doing you are building another decision tree with these residual values and the independent column is in high and this way what you are doing you are building decision tree in sequence one after another and then you, when you are predicting so what you need to do the first prediction plus the second prediction plus the third prediction this way. okay just now i showed to you that is the second prediction is equal to first prediction plus learning rate multiplied by second gt1 okay So this is all about gradient boosting method for regression. Now, next what I will do, I will I will discuss about how to implement it. So first thing is, because our data set is very, very small, it's very simple. So at the same time, there is no missing value. There is no need for this imputation. All the values you will find are numeric in nature. There is no categorical variable. 
and data is very very limited so that's why i'm not going for you know cleaning of data or splitting of data say to get the trading data say testing data say this in a very simple way i just want to implement it so what i'm doing that is import pandas as cd that is its abbreviation import numpy as np abbreviation import matplot matplotlib.pyplot as plt i imported it but i didn't use because in this next part i will show you um, how to use the gradient boosting method for a large data set then i am importing you know from sklearn that is ensemble ensemble is what always keep in mind you can keep this way it is a collection of uh, you know uh, uh, a different uh, method this this way you can uh, consider or you can uh, consider you know this ensemble method if you want to in high level language if you means uh, you, you want to know it uh, in, in depth analysis if you want to do about this ensemble so ensemble is nothing but a multiple criteria decision analysis ensemble is nothing but a multiple criteria decision analysis this much i can say now now from sklearn.matrix you can import mean squared error so when you are importing mean squared error means this is nothing but a matrix because you are using the regression so in regression you must measure the accuracy and the accuracy when you are going to do this you can measure the mean squared error or the root mean squared error or you can write a simple function to measure the mean squared error so first step is you need to load the data so upon the pd dot read csv you pass the name of the uh, csv file csv is comma separated uh, file so so it will transfer a data frame or assign a data frame to the variable data so data dot head you will do it all the columns and the uh, five rows by default now what i'm doing next i'm just splitting the independent variable and the dependent variable in the independent variable you will get age and height in the dependent variable you will get weight okay and i'm converting this weight column to the float data type so that's why what i'm doing so data that is weight so you will get this uh, weight column and i'm converting it to this float data type and i'm assigning it to a variable y so x1 now uh, will contain all the independent variable and y is the uh, target column now when you are using any uh, uh sklearn uh, method so always remember that is python is written in c programming language it is a object oriented programming language but it is not a pure object oriented programming language like small talk so in python everything in form of class object and method so what i'm doing first i am you know i'm creating a parameter parameters is nothing but a dictionary i'm taking the key value this learning rate and corresponding value 0.01 so next what i'm doing this regression is equal to ensemble dot gradient boosting regression and i'm passing the parameter gradient boosting regression and instantiating this method and during this instantiation i am passing some you know algorithm parameters value with the help of a dictionary parameter and in front of it i'm just putting the two asterisk sign so this is in a simple way you can consider in the dictionary you have the key and the value now when you are putting the two asterisk sign so it is nothing but you know it's removing the data type and it's taking only the value and it's giving uh, to the gradient boosting regression during its instantiation you, you got my point so next what i'm doing so regression dot feed the first one is this x1 that is independent variable and second one is the dependent variable now next is i need to predict so if you want to predict the regression dot predict you pass the independent variable so you will get the predicted value you have the predicted value you can check now the next one is mean square error how to calculate the mean square error so mean square error the function we have taken so mean square error is will take the two argument that is actual value that is its y and the predicted value and that you are getting from the gradient boost 
that is Riesel method. And the mean square error value, you are getting 2.92. Okay, so that's all in brief how to implement gradient boosting with Riesel uh, with the help of SQLearn. And if you have any question, you can ask me. Okay.